recording. So in terms of engagement with knowledge, why Hafid ibn Hibban rahimahullah brings this as the second principle of, of life, of success in life. And he starts it off with a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, making us understand the virtue and the excellence of seeking knowledge and engaging with knowledge, engaging life long learning. He says, Samiatu, he says a hadith that a person traveled for some time and some, some distance and he came and he was asked by another person, what has brought you here? So he says, I have come to get knowledge. So the hadith is then narrated to him. He says, فَإِنِّي سَمِعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم يقول, That I have heard Rasulullah saying, مَا مِنْ خَارِجٍ يَخْرُجُ مِنْ بَيْتِهِ There is no person who leaves his home. يَطْلُبُ الْعِلْمَ In search of knowledge. إِلَّا وَضَعَتْ لَهُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَجْنِحَتَهَا Except that the angels ribbon bima yasna the angels in honor in approval in encouragement in motivation for what they see the student of knowledge doing in honor of that they place their wings at the feet of these people seeking knowledge allahu akbar allahu akbar the angels the most purest of beings who allah has created from the creation of allah who don't disobey Allah even a atom's weight, weight or an eye blink for an eye blink. When they see someone like you and I today, brothers and sisters, we have tuned into this. We are taking part of this lesson. Why? In search of knowledge. This hadith applies to us directly that the angels out of honor, in encouragement, in support of what we are doing, have placed their wings beneath our legs, beneath our feet, in honor of what we are doing. Now, this is not something that we can see physically, but it is an honor which Allah has placed upon us by instructing the angels to fulfill this, this uh, honorary, honorary practice upon us. There is some few principles in this hadith. You might have picked it up before me. There is no one who leaves his home. This gives us an understanding that for knowledge, a person needs to do some sacrifice. You'll have to leave. Now, mashallah, don't use this as an example here. We are in isolation now. So we are in a special case. We're not leaving our home. And alhamdulillah, in the comfort of our home, we are getting this... Uh, bit of knowledge and information and mashallah ilam is coming to us but generally but as well we have sacrificed we have cleared our schedule and we are sitting down focusing taking our time and this is an effort we are doing so generally to get knowledge a person will have to sacrifice leave their comfort zone typical example of this is the story of musa alayhi salatu wasalam you know this that it is mentioned in the tafsir of surah al kahf that once he was giving a sermon and somebody was very impressed with his sermon, stood up and said, Ya Musa, who is the most knowledgeable person on the surface of this earth at this point in time? Musa alayhi salam being the prophet of Allah, being Kalimullah, the one who speaks to Allah, took it for granted that it is me. I'm the Nabi, Allah is revealing to me and I'm the source of knowledge on this earth through whom Allah is speaking to all of you. So he said, Anna, I, I am the most knowledgeable person on the surface of this earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent revelation to Musa alayhi salatu salam, making his tarbiyah and guiding him and teaching him that this word Anna, attributing things to yourself, is not something that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if it is a reality. All credit always goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in tarbiyah, in instruction to Musa alayhi salatu salam, Allah informed him, Oh Musa, there is an individual who is more knowledgeable than you as well on the surface of this earth. 
Musa alayhi salam was intrigued and interested. Who is this? Ya Allah, I want to learn from him. Now being Musa alayhi salam, and you know Musa alayhi salatu salam's temperament, he was a, mashallah, very uh, strong-willed person. And he had a larger than life uh, uh, temperament. I mean, he could have sent uh, someone to, you know, summon. He could have summoned this person, Khidr alayhi salam. He could have summoned Khidr alayhi salatu salam that I have heard about you. I'm the Nabi of this time. You come and see me. I want to speak to you. And I want to see what you know. But no, this was not what he did. He, the prophet of the time, left his comfort, left his home, took some food with him and traveled the distance. And the Quran says, until it became difficult for them and they got tired and hungry. And then he told his uh, Yusha bin Noon, he says, where is the food? We are tired. Nasaba, we, have, uh, we, we are tired now, we are hungry. Where is the food? Let's get it. And that's where they realized, no, the, the fish got ex escaped and this is where we need to go. So then he came and he met Khidr Ali Salatu Salam and he says, can I stay with you? Can I follow you? So that you may teach me from that which you have been taught. And this is a student of knowledge who puts himself in front of his, in front of the teacher and says, I have come to learn, teach me. I'm willing to sacrifice. I'm willing to give up uh, the, the comforts of my home, of my time. And I'm coming out to learn and to sacrifice. This is a condition of, of knowledge. And these are the principles that when a person will sacrifice and give up their time and leave their comfort zone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the doors of knowledge for them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said on this point, Man salaka tariqan yaltamisu fihi ilman. The one who treads the path of knowledge. Treads the path of knowledge. What is this? This is a beautiful point, brothers and sisters. Knowledge is not a destination. Knowledge is a journey. Man salaka tariqan. The one who treads the path of knowledge. Knowledge is not a destination. One single event. It is a journey, lifelong journey. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the one who treads the path of knowledge, sahal Allahu bihi tariqan ila al-jannah. Allah will open and ease the door of Jannah, the paths of Jannah for that person. Allah will show them the way of Jannah, make them un understand what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is bad, what is halal, what is haram. They will make wise decisions. They will move, they will progress in life and they will, they will benefit and go forward. So this is this hadith which Sheikh Ibn Hibban started this chapter of his or this principle uh, in terms of making us understand what is it in honor of the one who sacrifices for knowledge. He then touches on a few aspects of the virtues of, of knowledge, the virtues of knowledge, right? And you see, he's got 50 chapters, 50 points or 50 uh, lessons on, on, on success. And he brings knowledge as number two. And he explains through this that after rectifying your heart and making true to Allah your intention that, oh my creator, I seek you. Oh, my creator, I am searching for you. I want to establish a living relationship with you. I want you to reside in my heart. I want to love you and I want you to become my beloved. Once a person makes those intentions within their heart of hearts, and now they need to know or have the know-how of how to make that a reality. Because those are intentions. Those are emotions, those are sentiments, those are feelings, and they are blessed, and it starts there. But to know how to achieve it, and to know how to get from point A to point B, and how to tread that path, a person will need knowledge. A person will need the tools, and the tools are knowledge. Therefore, the first task on the road to success after taqwa 
is knowledge. Knowledge leads to understanding. Brothers and sisters, knowledge leads to understanding. When we study, when we understand the hadith, when we see the principles of the teachings of Rasulullah the teachings of the Quran, this brings good sense to the mind and it brings iman and faith to the heart. And when a person has good sense and iman is increased and faith and connection with Allah increases, then good decisions are made. Good decision. This leads to good decisions. A person says, okay, I need to, I would like to buy some clothes for my children. I would like to buy, they I mean, I can just go and pick up anything I see from there and base my decision purely on fashion, purely on what my child wants, purely on what I see on television, what I see in the, in the books, purely on what I see my friends and their children wearing, or I can base my decision on the teachings of Rasulullah and the Quran. What does the Quran teach me when it comes to dressing? How I should dress and how I should dress my kids. So now when I stand in that aisle to choose the clothes, I'm making a conscious decision, a good decision, which will lead to my children's honor, to the protection of my children's esteem, to the protection of my, uh, my izzat and my dignity and my children's dignity. That's one, one simple example. Knowledge leads to understanding and understanding leads to good decisions in everything we do. And whenever we will make good decisions, good decisions result in honor and dignity being preserved. Self esteem, self honor rather being preserved. May Allah honor all of us. May Allah preserve all our respect and our dignity and inshallah increase us in respect and dignity. Also, another virtue, Sheikh Ibn Habban, these are all points from the book. These are principles he mentions that knowledge separates the dreamers from the achievers. Knowledge separates the dreamers from the achievers. What does this mean? This means that there are many people, mashallah, as we grow up in our lives, and we have all been through this, at any point and every point in our lives, we have certain ideas and certain dreams and certain aspirations and ambitions. Ya Allah, I hope for this and I want for that and I, and I make dua for this. But we are not willing to tread the path. We are not, we, either we are not willing or we don't know how. So knowledge, taking it upon myself to understand and know how do I get what I want? How do I get that Jannah which I am pining for, which I am hoping for? How do I secure that forgiveness of Allah which I so sorely need? How do I find myself where I will bring from the hold of the Kothar, from the beloved uh, Mubarak hand of my Prophet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That is a knowledge. I, I know that and I want that. How do I get that? That will separate the dreamer from the achiever. Once I know, now I will practice and I will do what I need to do to get there. And that separates the dreamers from the achievers. May Allah make us achievers and not only dreamers, inshallah. Sheikh Ibn Habban moves on to explain the methodology to knowledge. He explains a few aspects about methodology of knowledge. And this is so important, brothers and sisters, uh, because it, it becomes uh, sometimes, you know, uh, we all again try from time to time, we might enroll in a course, uh, we might sign up for a certain, uh, uh, you know, series of lectures, or we might get involved with some uh, classes, but unfortunately the momentum doesn't stay. Uh, we, we, we give up very quickly or our routine life overpowers us. So many different things we are, you know, are jockeying for our time and our attention, which just becomes very difficult for us to maintain. So the methodology in which we seek knowledge also is important uh, because sometimes the person might start and might say, okay, I've done, I've done this course in knowledge, but I still don't feel like I understand. I still feel like empty. I don't, 
I don't have much knowledge. So, you know, I don't see the benefit. Perhaps I'm, I'm too old for it. Perhaps I can't remember. Perhaps, you know, it's uh, my, mem my, mem my memory is not as it used to be. Or I can't, uh, you know, it's not, it's not benefiting me. So perhaps I'll use my time in something else. And this separates those who are successful and fail, and fail just by not knowing the methodology of seeking knowledge. And Sheikh speaks about this methodology. He says, number one, take your time. Again, I'm coming to this point again. Knowledge, seeking knowledge, engaging with knowledge is a journey. It's not a destination. It's a journey and not a destination. Take your time. He says, uh, and I quote the Arabic uh, there at the bottom. You can see it on the screen for the, for the people who are following on Zoom. Ya tullabul ilm. Shabi rahimahullah used to say, Oh, students of knowledge. La tutlubul ilm bi safahatin mutaish. Don't seek knowledge uh, by being hasty and being foolish. Utlubuhu bi sakinatin wa waqarin wa and but seek it with dignity, with uh, poise, with with composure, with uh, you know calmness. Take your time. Don't rush. It's not about. It's not about mastering the field in one course. It's not about getting the answer that we need in you know, in one chapter, but taking one chapter of knowledge at a time, one verse at a time, one lesson at a time. Seeking knowledge is a journey, not a destination. Seeking knowledge is to shape and mold our minds, our mindset, our hearts, our practices, our body. It's not cramming of information. I'm repeating this point. Knowledge, seeking knowledge is to shape, is to shape our character, shape our mindset, shape and rectify our hearts. Knowledge is to express in our actions. Knowledge is not the cramming of information in our minds, which perhaps academic system makes it makes us feel, or maybe. We have grown up to understand that's what knowledge is, that I need to swat, I need to memorize many things, I need to know, uh, you know, I need to be able to say many things and rattle off many aspects. That is not knowledge. Knowledge is an expression of a mindset and the spiritual state of the heart. And that is achieved by learning and being involved and being engaged with knowledge all the time. May Allah grant us a lifelong knowledge, a lifelong journey of knowledge, inshallah. Sheikh again says qualities that are needed are sakina and waqar. And this is just summarizing this. He says calmness and composure is needed. Taking your time. If you got it today, very good. If you didn't get it today, go tomorrow. If you didn't get it tomorrow, that's fine. The next day. I'll give you an example uh, to understand this. A person was studying some knowledge. Uh, he went to study. And after some time, he couldn't you know, comprehend, couldn't understand, he couldn't remember anything really. So he gave up and he left. And on his way home, he stopped at the stream to have a bit of a rest. And as he was relaxing there, he noticed that every minute or so there would be a drop of water falling from the top of the stream on one side uh, and it would fall on a, on a, on a rock, on a, on, a, on, a, on a boulder that was there. And he noticed that where it was falling, one, one, drop, one droplet of water every minute or so, every two minutes, three minutes, one droplet. But because of the continuous repeti uh, repetition and the repetitive nature of that water, something soft as water, but because it was being done over and over and over again, it had created a groove 
and it had shaped the rock and it had created a, a, a pathway in the rock. So this person thought and he thought to himself, Subhanallah, water which is so soft and rock which is so hard, but because water is doing something silently and it is doing it consistently and it is doing it uh, you know, repetitively, it has affected and has impacted something as hard as a rock. And he said, you know what? Knowledge cannot be more, water cannot be more softer than knowledge. Knowledge must be more, uh, water cannot be more softer than, uh, than, than, than uh, knowledge, sorry, knowledge cannot be more softer than water. Meaning, knowledge, water is softer than knowledge. And knowledge has a little bit, you know, it, it has impact, it has, a, it, has, it has power in it. And my mind can't be harder than a rock. My mind can't be harder than a rock. And knowledge must be more powerful than water. So I just need to go back and continue sacrifice, be consistent, continue my journey, and inshallah, I will get where I need to go. This is that aspect of Sakina and Waqar. Maintain your composure and take what you can. Take what you can. Take what you can. Sahaba radiallahu anhum were all different kinds of people. They were the muftis, they were the huffah, they were the ulama, they were the business people, they were the farmers, they were the villages as well. And they were those who had, you know, who lived out Bedouins, really Bedouins who had no real culture, no real, uh, you know, um, uh, aspect in their uh, uh, civilization and they, they, they were like rough people but they all benefited from Rasulullah sallallahu and each one took to his capacity and this is the objective of our life Allah is going to ask us of how much effort we make that is what Allah is going to ask us this that did you try your best did you make your effort that is all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants so that is Sakina and Waqar. The second quality is courage. And the third thing is abstaining from the disobedience of Allah. These three things. When a student of the knowledge of deen abstains from the disobedience of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him beneficial knowledge. Beneficial knowledge. And what is beneficial knowledge? Knowledge which takes one to practice. And I will speak about this point in the next few minutes or so. I'll just complete on this thing, on this aspect here. It is famously mentioned about Imam al-Shafi rahimahullah that he complained to his uh, teacher Waqir about his bad memory that he couldn't remember much. So his teacher gave him advice and said, He gave me a bequeath and advice that stay away from the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because knowledge, knowledge is not words in the paper, mind you. It is not words in the book. It is not gigabytes or terabytes or a chip. No. Because ilm is guidance, is light. Ilm and knowledge is guidance which is given. And the the noor of guidance, the noor of Allah, which is ilam, knowledge. When ilam comes from Allah, ilam, Allah is alim, the most knowledgeable. And he is al-alim, the, the one who knows everything. And knowledge comes from him. And the knowledge, which is of guidance and of light, is not given to the one who disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So once you remove the darkness or you keep the heart clear of dark, darkness in the heart, then automatically the light will be there. And automatically when the light comes, the darkness should dissipate and should move away. No matter how small that light is, no matter how small that candle is, no matter how small that flame is, but around it, the dark dissipates and disappears and dissolves and, 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 and falls away. And this is the norm of ilam. When a person learns knowledge, learns the chapters of education, of knowledge, of the rights of Allah, the rights of the creation of Allah, and the different teachings of the hadith and the Quran and fiqh, 
uh, and understands what Allah is telling him in the Quran, slowly but surely his heart is filled with light, with guidance, with the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month of Ramadan al Mubarak grant us intentions and pledges that inshallah we will start a life and we will continue a life on the journey of this path of knowledge through which our hearts inshallah will illuminate with the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaykh Ibn Habban continues with this uh, methodology. He says, it is also important to understand that what is the system of knowledge? How, what is the, uh, how, how, what is the progression of knowledge? How it works? So he's given six levels or six uh, steps in which knowledge should be followed. He says, first, al the first aspect of knowledge is the intention. Why am I attending this class? Why did I listen to this lecture? Why am I listening to the Friday khutbah? Why do I tune in and listen to my favorite sheikh? Why do I read this book? That's the first thing a person should ask himself. What is the intention behind any of this? I'm going to ask the the, the viewers are on, on, online, uh, if they can inshallah answer what you feel or what you think is the intention, the first and most important intention of seeking knowledge, engaging with knowledge. There could be many intentions, mind you, but what is the most important intention? The all encompassing intention. Let's see. Inshallah, type it out and we'll see, we'll, 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 we'll discuss it. I'll continue with this. The second thing is listening inten intently. Al istima, and this is very interesting, brothers and sisters. After the niya is in place, right? Our niya is correct. Why we are doing it? Then you don't just read a book. You don't just watch a YouTube video, and now you you know you have you have knowledge. No, al istima, istima is an Arabic word which is different than Sima. Sami'a Yasma'u means to listen. Istima has a little bit of a different scale in it. It has a different scale in it. And it means more than just listening. It means listening intently, attentively. Istima means leaving whatever else you are doing and giving your full 100% attention and focus to what you are uh, doing, what you are listening to. This is istima. And this teaches us that a student learns from the teacher through a consistent way. It's not just haphazard and by the way, if we want to become students of knowledge, we will have to be serious about it. It's not just you know, by the way, mashallah, we got something playing uh, on the, uh, you know, uh, on the phone and everyone is talking and discussions are carrying on. No, I'm sitting, I'm sitting with my notebook, I'm taking notes, I'm revising my lessons, I'm thinking about it, I'm discussing it with others. This is istima, to intently look, listen and reflect and be attentive to what is being said. So first, al-awwalu an niya Mashallah, I got somebody who's answered and said to satisfy Allah and to transform our life. That is a good intention, brother. Mashallah, of course, everything is done for Allah. But specifically, knowledge is learned to practice. The intention of knowledge is to practice. And of course, practice for who? Practice for Allah. It is practice to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the basic most bottom line intention of achieving or studying or uh, engaging with knowledge is to practice. If a person just gets knowledge to increase the information, they have missed the point of, 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 of education, of knowledge, of seeking knowledge. It's now, uh, and we'll discuss it in the next report, in, in the next, inshallah, few minutes. I will not go into it here. 
So that intention, the intention is the intention to practice. Number two, thumma istima. Then to bind yourself, to bind yourself, to discipline yourself, to sit at with a teacher, sit with a guide, sit through a course and learn depending on whatever aspects of life that you want to learn on and whatever aspects of being. Number three, after your intention is in place and you have listened carefully and you have reflected, then then understanding comes. Understanding. Remember, it's not just, as I said earlier, uh, you try to just memorize many things, try to write, uh, and I've got a library full of books. And I've, no, it's not. that's not knowledge. Knowledge is not, uh, you know, uh, facts and figures. This is knowledge. The intention followed by listening carefully, reflecting. Number three, understanding. Allah will bring understanding to that knowledge after that. Once understanding comes, then number four is where a person then memorizes and internalizes that, that message or that knowledge. Number five, that brings a person to action. And number six, then a person can then teach thereafter. After this. Now remember, brothers and sisters, only teach education, only teach knowledge of deen once you are approved to do so. Only teach knowledge of deen once you are approved to do so. And I mean this on an official level. If you want to officially have a class, you want to officially teach someone something, uh, then do so once you are approved. On an unofficial capacity to your children, to your family, to your wife, to your husband, to your friends, you want to share some knowledge that you have learned, you have learned from someone, you have read some good information somewhere, then of course, by all means, share the good word. But to, sh to officially become a teacher, you need to first be a student of a teacher who has been approved to teach, then you can then teach. Abu Darda rahimahullah radiallahu anhu used to say, La takunu aliman hatta takuna muta'allima. Do not be, you, you cannot be, you cannot be a knowledgeable person until you are a student of knowledge. You will first need to go through the whole effort of achieving knowledge, the sacrifice for it, giving up your time for it, and going through the tarbiyah and training and discipline of your teacher explaining to you, it's done like this, it's not done like this, this means this, this is, this is implemented like this, this is understood like this. Remember, brothers and sisters, again, knowledge is not words, facts, and figures. Knowledge is emotions. Knowledge is understanding. And for us to have true knowledge, we will have to take knowledge in the right way. And understanding, you know, there's a beautiful example to know that the difference between information and how to apply the information. These are two separate things. For example, information or knowledge is to know that a tomato is a fruit. This is a fact. But wisdom and understanding is to know not to put this fruit in a fruit salad. So this gives us an understanding of knowledge of deen as well. To study the knowledge of deen from the people who have got the knowledge of deen through a tradition, authenticated knowledge, which comes not only with the words, but comes with the understanding, with the tarbiyah and training, with the, with the do's and don'ts, with the etiquettes of it, with the understanding and application and implementation of it. Once we have got training or learning from them, and they have approved us and said, look, Inshallah, you are you can teach now. Inshallah, you have a good understanding. Then, by all means, go ahead. But do not qualify yourself, or no one should go around qualifying themselves to become teachers. And this is to protect Deen. This is to protect Deen. Why? Lawlal Isnad 
Lawl al Isnad, it is mentioned, uh, saying goes, if it was not for narrations, chain of narrations, that you can't just go and say anything in Deen, you have to say who you got it from and who that person got it from and where they learned it from. So if it was not for this, that authenticated, unbroken chain from the teacher right up to Rasulullah, if it was not for this, then then whoever would wish to say whatever they wish to say, they would say that we, our opinion on this matter is this. My opinion on this matter is this. Mashallah, we know in, uh, in academia, you know, in the Western academia, no person, no writer can write any piece of information in any essay in any dissertation, in any thesis, in any PhD, if it is not reference. Where did you get this piece of information? Where is it coming from? You can't just create something from thin air and just bring it out. It must be supported with some proof, with some authentication. And if the knowledge of the world requires this, then the knowledge of Allah, the knowledge of Deen, the knowledge of Iman, the knowledge of salvation, of right and wrong, of eternal salvation and eternal damnation, of course, would require much more serious and stringent uh, requirement. So therefore, uh, brothers and sisters, we, as Abu Darda radiallahu anhu is teaching us this, that do not become it is not possible for us to become knowledgeable until we become students of the knowledgeable. And we cannot become people of knowledge until we practice on our knowledge. That's what his statement finishes off at. That was the two aspects of methodology he speaks about. Hafiz ibn Hibban then goes on to the warnings of this path. And I have started with some of the warnings of being particularly careful about our education and our knowledge and not just teaching, uh, you know, without being approved to teach. Uh, another warning he gives is that knowledge should not be acquired for worldly purposes. And what could be some worldly purposes of knowledge? There could be many brothers and sisters. In fact, all of us, whenever we are listening to any piece of information, any knowledge of deen, we need to ask ourselves, what is this? What am I learning this knowledge for? Is it? Ah, this is a good point to tell my wife. Oh, my husband needs to know this point. They're not doing this. Oh, you know what? I know my cousin. She, she, she this, this fits right on her. This S point on Riba is good for her. Oh, you know what? My, this so-and-so friend, they do a lot of boasting and a lot of, uh, you know, showing off. This point is good for them. Whenever we are seeking knowledge, listening to knowledge, we need to assess ourselves. What is the intention? Are we learning it to prove points to others? Are we learning it to correct others? Are we learning it uh, to, to become teachers, only to become teachers? Are we learning it for personal agendas? What is the reason? Are we learning, learning it for, to, to, to get a better status in life? That, oh, okay, so you are, from, you are the people of knowledge, so we respect you, you have knowledge, that's why we respect you. Is it? That should not be the intention of knowledge. Again, I'm repeating this, the intention of knowledge is one word, practice. Practice. Whatever I hear, whatever I'm learning, whatever I'm reading, whatever I'm writing, whatever I'm contemplating, how can I bring this in my life? How can this fit in my life? How can I become a complete human being by fitting this chapter of knowledge into the missing part of my life? And this will be the right way of doing it, not for worldly purposes. When the intention is wrong, brothers and sisters, this generates haughtiness and pride. Very important point. If the intention is not correct and a person gets more and more knowledge and they learn more, they learn how to read Quran well, mashallah, perhaps they learn Tajweed or they learn some 
teaching, you know, on hadith, or they learn some fake, or they learn some aspect of Islam. And if the intention is not right, then that instead of bringing humility in their life, it brings pride. The same knowledge which was supposed to guide you has now become a cause of misguidance. Allah protect us. And it leads to unbeneficial knowledge, which is again knowledge without practice. Rasulullah used to make dua. Literally, he used to make dua. He used to say, Allahumma inna nas'aluka ilman nafi'ah. Oh Allah, I ask you for beneficial knowledge. Not just knowledge, but beneficial knowledge. Another dua, inni a'udhu bika min ilmi la yanfa. Oh Allah, I ask you protection from knowledge which does not benefit. So not just increasing of knowledge, because that knowledge will bring pride and arrogance. Oh, I know something. I know you don't know. I am knowledgeable. You are ignorant. You don't know anything on this. I know what I'm talking about. That brings that knowledge. But true knowledge is like that tree. True knowledge is like that fruit bearing tree, that branch. The more fruit it has, the more ripe fruit it bears, the more heavier it becomes and the more lower the branches fall in humility, in humbleness and more easier it is for people to benefit from the tree and from the fruits of that tree. You will never see a tree, a fruit bearing branch, which the more fruits it bears, the more rigid and hard and uh, tough it becomes and the more uh, fixed in its nature it becomes. No. It becomes softer and more malleable and more humble uh, to people and uh, bows down for the benefit of people. May Allah grant us that knowledge which is of benefit to us and to those around us. So, some other warnings he gives, and this is, inshallah, a uh, point to take is when we are taking knowledge also. Remember, I said we should not just teach without approval to teach. In the same way, we should not take knowledge from anyone and everyone. We should only take knowledge from those who are approved to give knowledge. And who is approved to give knowledge? Any such person who has authenticated knowledge themselves from Rasulullah all the way down. A tradition of authenticated knowledge. Who can prove a sinner and a chain of narrators from his teacher to his teacher to his teacher. Knowledge is not taken from self-taught people in Islam. Knowledge is not taken from autodidactics in Islam. Someone who is self-read. Someone who has, you know, just uh, read a few books or has written a few pamphlets or has attended a few seminars. Knowledge is not taken from them. Yes, we can listen to them, maybe take but they are, they are not sources of knowledge. And this is very important to take note because, again, knowledge, a defective teacher, a defective teacher, there's a saying, this is a Farsi saying, Neem Hakim Khatrai Jan. Neem Hakim Khatrai Jan. A defective doctor puts your life at stake. Neem Hakim Khatrai Jan. Uh, a, a, a defective doctor puts your life at stake and Neem Neem uh, Neem Mullah Khatrai Iman and a defective teacher and a defective Imam a defective knowledgeable person and a defective teacher puts your Iman at stake puts your Iman you could lose your life by an unqualified doctor but you could lose your Iman and your eternal protection and savior by someone who is unqualified to give you the knowledge that they are giving. Because knowledge, again, brothers and sisters, are words, they are emotions, they are aspirations, they are mindsets. And as the teacher speaks and educates and communicates, they are passing through these aspects. They are not only passing through words, they are not only passing through rulings and legal uh, laws, and you know uh, translations they are passing through emotions they are it's a heart to heart transference 
of emotions and aspirations and intentions and an ineffective teacher who a, 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 an infective teacher in fact someone who's infected with a virus for example someone who is not a complete teacher doesn't know what he's teaching and has not got the full uh, approval you know full knowledge then he is in fact spreading intellectual viruses more than benefit and this you will be able to see the results if in society so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is an important point, brothers and sisters, especially in Western countries, especially in Western countries where there is, uh, it is common practice for people to, you know, uh, take up a, a position and take up a platform and, uh, you know, uh, become authorities on matters of, of, of deen and fiqh and, uh, you know, uh, aspects of Islam on which they do not have the necessary qualifications or studying or uh, training in. And for us to know this, we are fully eligible to find out and ask before we take knowledge, brother, sister, what are your credentials? Where have you studied from? Where is your knowledge coming from? Before you take that knowledge. May Allah grant us all to understand and make amal. I've got two more points to do, inshallah, then we will wrap it up. The purpose of knowledge. Number one, it is a spiritual endeavor. Knowledge, is the, the learning of knowledge is a spiritual endeavor. It is not to impress anybody. It is not to prove a point. It is not a status symbol. And it is not only to teach. It is a spiritual endeavor. A person seeking knowledge. So for example, this one hour we were busy sharing knowledge and learning and seeking knowledge. This was a spiritual exercise. This was an ibadah. This was an ibadah. This was a means of us coming closer to Allah. It is as good as us performing nafil salah. It is as good as, uh, as us going for voluntary umrah and volunt doing voluntary other acts because it is an ibadah just as other acts are ibadah. And it is a spiritual endeavor and the objective of it is to practice. Remember brothers and sisters, one universal principle, Sheikh Ibn Hibban brings it, it's a beautiful principle. He says, everything is acquired for its uses and benefits, not for itself. Whatever we acquire is acquired for its uses and its benefits and not for itself. So, for example, uh, if I buy a car, I should be buying a car for what it's going to do for me. What I'm looking for in a car, not just because of what the badge it has on it or how much it costs or the status symbol which comes with that car. No, I'm going to buy a car because of the uses that it, I'm going to get out of it. And that is intelligence. That is wisdom. That is uh, good understanding that everything that we do, we look for the benefits and we use it, we acquire it for the uses of it, not for itself. So likewise, knowledge is not a attained for anything else, which as I'm saying, to impress others, to have something to talk about with others, to prove a point, or this will be good to tell somebody, or I need to learn this so I can better the argument, or as a status symbol, or whatever. But it's for the benefits of the knowledge, which is to practice that. How can I fit this piece of information, this chapter of knowledge, this verse of Quran, the spiritual aspect into the complete life that I'm trying to lead? Where can this fit in to complete me? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding brothers and sisters to be able to practice on the knowledge that we seek because Practicing on the knowledge that we seek will yield amazing results. It will yield amazing results. Knowledge has the prescriptions for success. Every time we will be lost, we, will, don't, we won't know what to do, how to do. It is knowledge that will come to our, that will come to save us. It will be knowledge that will be our savior. And it will have the prescriptions for us to know how to navigate 
out of that situation to a better situation, how to know what is right, what is wrong. And if we, inshallah, we do it with the correct intentions and we apply ourselves and know that it's a journey and not a destination, and inshallah, starting in this Ramadan, continuing thereafter, wherever we can, wherever we can, our children enroll them into classes, daily classes, weekly classes, ourselves get good books, read good books, see how we can, the, 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 the closest uh, center to us, the closest madra, masjid to us, the closest madrasa to us, are there programs for adults, for kids, what can we do, how can we get involved, how can we learn, how can we get our knowledge in the car, at home, instead of listening to you know, other things, music or even uh, time wasting things, put a good lecture in, put a good, you know, uh, uh, sit as a family, read a hadith and just see how inshallah this molds our life and shapes our environment and shapes our mindset and shapes our spiritual state. Knowledge is not facts and figures. Knowledge is to shape and develop us as complete human beings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us this month of Ramadan to give us that life of treading this path of knowledge. Jazakumullahu khair wa akhiru dawana alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.